Greetings once again, mages, dudes, diz, din, back again with another chapter of Fairy Tale The Hundred Years Quest, where previously the factions have been set for Ignea's true Dragon King Festival, with Ignea imploring the Signaria sisters to unleash his own personal spell, a spell that brought the other dragon gods under his control. The kinder one, Selene and Merkphobia, rampaged out of control in their dwellings, becoming dangerous and violent and causing mass destruction, while the ones that seemed deceit, very much like Dog Ravmog before four were suddenly resurrected, bringing back Vernus and Alderaan to menace the world yet again. Natsu, just as he was declaring war against Igni and Ferris, found himself transported back to Magia Dragon in order to inform the others about what had happened as Elf Sarah felt the disturbance all across the land, and as the black mage Ferris made her intentions known to Ignea, he retreated back to what she calls her demons of the book of Ferris, meaning that just as Zeref before her, Ferris has made her own breed of Etheria. And if you remember the Tartarus arc, you know how tough they can be. And shoot, not just Tartarus, the battle with Alvarez as well. The battle lines have been drawn. The world is in danger, or at least the continent. Can our heroes manage to stop both dragon and demon alike? Join me as I find out, won't you? Alright, Fairy Tale Hundred Years Quest Chapter 165 Five Fairies. And so that's what? Natsu, Lucy, Urza, Grey, and Wendy? The cats are always counted out. <laughs> and oh god, this cover page. <sighs> Natsu and Happy, you guys never learn. I don't know what you thought was gonna ha happen after drawing on Urza's face, but uh, if you at least get off with this, you'll be lucky. Jumping in, we pick up at Magia Dragon. As we see the mural of the five dragon gods, it shines a brilliant gleam. As Elf Sarah tells the others, behold, the crest of the five dragon gods is shining. He trembles, saying, the sky glowed and ether nanoparticles evaporated. His crow ally, Hikage, or Shade, says, This is bad! Claw! <laughs> I forget about this guy half the time. Oh, I guess I'm not the only one. Gray thinks to himself, Who's that? Urza thinks, The crow's talking. Lucy thinks, Uh-oh, I don't remember. While Natsu outright says, Were you again? And Wendy says, That Shade... The bird of passage. I, I don't I don't remember how many of them were actually there when Shade was initially introduced. <laughs> I, I respect to Mashima and Atsuo for having the forethought to be like, yeah, we don't feature this guy enough for you to remember who he is. Shade says, according to my Intel network, the dragon gods you've defeated have been revived and are going berserk. Aww. <laughs> Uh, Athena says, turns and says, Vernus too. Ugh, we gonna get more Athena. Elf Sarah grimaces, saying, even Merkphobia and Selene. It's just like all that work. <laughs> it's like when you, you've beaten several bosses and then you have the boss rush where they come back, but they have even more powers and abilities. But not to just smacks his hand, saying, we beat, already beat him once, we'll do it again. As if it was easy the first time around. And naturally, Merc Fo- Uh, Elf Sarah says no. Their power has increased. In fact, this may be their true power level. Yeah, nobody really got the memo that their powers were being suppressed. Elf Sarah says, and that's not all. Giant lacrimas have appeared in each of the five dragon la dragon god lands. And they're said to be turning people into dragons. Wait, lacrima. Like the ones that Laxus, Cobra, Sting, and Rogue have. Dragon Slayer lacrima. Oh. I thought it was just going to be the Fire and Flame Guild. But he literally meant turn the entire country into a land of dragons. Holy key. 
he fully, Ignea fully wants to resurrect the dragon. En masse. Whether people want to or not. I just thought this was a chosen situation. But the people he chosen, they'll be more aware of what they're becoming. Freaking insane. Huh. Gray is in shock saying, what? Happy questions turning people into dragons. Uh, Carla notes, they're forcing non-dragon slayers to turn into dragon. While well, Urza questions, what's going on? While well, Natsu remembers Ignea's words, all the humans here are prepared to go to the world, to the dragon world. And Ferris's exclamation, dragonization magic. Yeah, but I didn't know it was gonna be like an en masse thing. Natsu says, no way. And then he blurts out, is this the Dragon King Festival thing Ignea was talking about? Everyone turns to him in shock. Lucy questions, in any case, if those lacrimas are turning people into dragons, will destroying them return everyone to normal? Oh, sh I just realized, if everyone's turning into dragons, would that mean Urza, Lucy, Grey? Oh my, huh. The Wendy notes, it could end the five dragon gods' frenzy too. Okay, so destroying the lacrima might be the key. Okay, that's that'll at least be easy enough, hopefully. Wait, aren't those lacrima like as large as mountains? But Natsu exclaims happily, Okay, we'll destroy all the giant lacrimas. There's five of us, and five enemies. The happy notes, don't forget me and Carla. Everyone forgets you guys, sorry. <laughs> and then Natsu notes, oh, sorry, forgot about Ferris. Lucy questions this, and Natsu tries his best to explain, Earthland Ferris seems like a baddie. I mean... Personally, I think she's kind of a baddie if you know what I mean, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> Urza's like, what? <laughs> like, wait, what? And now she just brushes off saying, oh, whatever. <laughs> she is, she did kind of come in like an afterthought. I personally love the concept of her, but she really was a one more thing kind of situation but Natsu just smiles saying we'll destroy the lacrima before we turn all the people on this continent into dragons we'll each do one which i don't like the idea of them all splitting up but uh, maybe they'll have help they need help <laughs> we need people to back them up on this one so Ah, oh, man. So everybody gets a dragon. Everybody also probably gets a demon at the same time. Oh, man. Freaking three-way death match in each region. But everyone else smiles. Except for Wendy. She's just got a determined look on her face. Elf Sarah calls out, Wait a moment. You intend to go separately? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But Natsu just turns saying, That'll be faster. He turns to walk away saying, Don't worry. When we take on a job, we get it done. He pumps his fist in the air saying, let's go. Fairy tale's gonna complete the hundred years quest. <laughs> nice little moment of, hey, this is the climax. You better pay attention. Ah, uh, we pick up in the dark wood <laughs> where Ferris addresses her demon saying, it seems that Ignea wishes to turn this continent into a world of dragons. The humans are acting to stop him. Yeah, what's your play in this, Ferris? Our aim is to crush both groups, to create a world of black wizards where neither human nor dragons are needed. Wait, I thought you were for destruction and mass. Okay, so wait, she's not trying to make everyone dyed in black. <laughs> no, that is the other Ferris was a world of white. She would be dyed in black. Is her true aim to make everyone dark magic users, whether they want to or not? See, because I I was so thrown off by what Ignea really wanted. Now I'm not sure about what Ferris is really after. Oh, and now we're introduced to each of the members of the Eurasian Seis, which is spelled <laughs> differently, whereas before it was the Spanish Six Seis, now it's the German Six Seis, which <laughs> freaking Mashima was just like, wait, there's another way to say six? Oh, I have an idea. Oh, man. The big guy is the Eurasian Seth Gaia, saying yes. May that world be overflowing with love. Hmm. The one female member, which, yeah, there's always one chick, isn't there? You gotta have the cheesecake. Is the Eurasian Seth member, Daemon, who says, who needs love? As long as I have black, I'll melt. Hmm, that's weird phrasing on that one. <laughs> the one guy who looks like a bird is Horatius Seis member, Bird. <laughs> oh, God. 
I, I can't help but laugh at that. And he even goes, trill, trill, trill. The humans and dragons will all fall to the ground before our might. The rather gloomy looking one is your Russian Sith member Blade, who says, I'll cut them down with my demonic blade. And the more pretty boy member, Horatian says member Gate says, I'm looking forward to when we release our power. And then the one who looks like Brain says, Pipe down, kids. Horatian says member Zero says, We don't need any words for destruction. Just gotta reduce everything to zero. Oh my god. So is this the same? Was he brought in in the same way that um Minerva was turned into a demon? Oh man, this guy. Damon turns to him saying, oh, that's rich coming from an ex-human. How about I melt you? Zero just says, interesting. But Ferris says, enough. I used to be human too. But those under black demonic influence cannot be human. Uh, I'm wondering, is she going for a world of demons? She raises her acnologia hand saying i gained power from acnologia and became a black wizard and zero you gained power from nirvana and became a demon oh i know nirvana had black magic but he was changed into a demon by nirvana what how that would mean he was changed when we were first introduced to him it's is that how he survived? Zero goes, hmm, as long as I can destroy everything, I don't care. And I owe you my life. He then turns away saying, but I ain't following nobody's orders. I do what I want. Farrah simply says, fine. Gaia addresses Farrah, while Bird says, you're only egg, egg couraging. I mean, encouraging him. <laughs> what is this dude's deal? Zero then turns saying, I want to destroy you when this job's done. Gate says, huh? You crossed the line there. While Blade says, I'll cut you down. But Ferris simply smiles saying, he's fine. I like this side of Zero too. I'll share a nice little tidbit to get you excited about this job. The humans opposing the dragons are from the guild known as Fairy Tale. And Zero is filled with rage as he grits through his teeth. Fairy Tale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shoot. Man, all we need is Jalal involved with this. <laughs> and Zero would be especially like, Ooh, I'm a beat it is. <laughs> <laughs> I will admit, with um as many times as the filler has used um Klonoa, what was his staff's name? Uh Kaldoa. When he appeared as Jack thought, yeah. <laughs> Because it made no real sense how he came back in the key of star of the starry sky arc. Because he was destroyed in the Eurasian Says arc. And then he comes back as Jackpot. And then at the end of the starry sky arc, he was like destroyed or sealed away or something happened there. But then he appears in the very non-canon special crossover with Rave Master. So I'm just like, okay, is he going to appear somewhere down the line? And then nope. It's Brain, or Zero, I guess we should say, who I'm pretty sure was only, what was, he was only defeated by Jalal, or was it that he was killed by Midnight? I can't actually remember. Regardless, last time we saw Brain, he, he was kind of jobbing real hard, so having him come back now is interesting. But knowing that he was turned into a demon at the time by Nirvana, that was so, I mean, if it was Ferris who turned him, that would at least make a little bit more sense. But Nirvana? Huh, I didn't think it was like that. And that was years ago, like seven, eight years ago? By this point in the story? Huh. We then cut the city of Armina. How did, how did Lucy get here so soon? Huh. Oh, Elsara? Did, did he transport her here while she arrives seeing the destruction she looks up seeing a literal sea in the sky saying the sky is water the power of Merkphobia. she races down the street saying i have to find the lacrima quick but suddenly a tower of water comes bursting out next to her water hmm i wonder the water sprout sends debris flying and a massive chunk of rock almost hits lucy as she screams and jumps out of the way saying what but suddenly she hears something oh 
man. As the townspeople, all half dragonized, come rushing towards her, including the hotel manager Kishima and his girlfriend Sharkette. Or Sharkina? However that went. Lucy says, D don't tell me these are the people of the city. They're turning into dragons. Lucy just barely manages to dodge out of the way as one of the citizens tries to strike at her, burying his claws into a wall behind her. As Lucy ducks out, she says that they're attacking. They've gone berserk. The citizens' powerful claws destroy half the building in one hit. And as Lucy runs from Kashima and his girlfriend, she says, so strong. If they hit me, I'm toast. Exactly why she shouldn't be doing this by herself. As Kashima and his girlfriend hit the ground, Lucy loses her footing. And as she's on the ground, the entire ground gives way. And she finds herself plunged into the water underneath. She thinks to herself as she submerged, water? There's water underground too? But then she sees a figure in the water. It's a half-dragonized caramel. Which... Hey, she's kind of rocking the dragon look. She smiles and says, those who target the water god will answer to me. We didn't really see Caramel fight when she was introduced, though. Which is ironic since that's going on in the anime now, time of recording. I still need to watch that episode. Lucy thinks to herself in shock, Caramel? I'm actually in in greatly intrigued by how all of this is going to go down. Because... Uh, I, well, I was really hoping that everyone, we'd have more people come in to help out with all of these fights and clashes and all that. But this is just the start, so I hope we at least have two chapters of Lucy trying at this. Next chapter, it's Lucy dealing with the situation in Armina and maybe managing to get to the Lacrima. Although, where's Merc's phobia in all of this? But what I could see happening, maybe before just as she manages to get past caramel and get to the lacrima he has to deal with mercphobia but also one of the Eurasians says and that will be a great time for her to somehow discover aquarius's key because i keep wondering where is it or maybe that's a good time for brandish who has found it to come in give it to lucy in the end despite her saying that she wasn't going to hand over the key easily. Because I was really wondering how we were finally going to resolve that. Because it had been so sidelined. And I kept wondering, how are we going to get back to the Lucy Aquarius thing? Not to mention, Lucy hasn't really gotten a prominent moment since her battle with Kyrie. Because the previous story arc, her... <laughs> I was getting kind of pissy about that. Well, no, because Lucy even still had a time when it came to her befriending of Athena. That was the big, that was her big selling moment. It's just that the battle against Gold Owl, it was mostly just gags when she was turned into Brandish. But she did have some good moments here and there, so getting to have Lucy maybe really show off in that this battle could be really good. But this final fight is one where I wish we had more people. Each character gets someone who's deeply connected to them or some kind of assistance in some way, shape, or form. The people coming in to help hold off the dragonized townspeople and citizens and all that. But I'm not sure how you would do that. Because it would be a great time to see Flair maybe come in and try to help out Lucy. But maybe that would be too much? I'm not sure. And I know that it would probably be a little too much. Because I feel like Ignia already used the technique he would have used on to get Dalgramog back. It's already been used and... There's no bringing him back, but that would also be kind of cool if Dograma comes in as well, creating yet another issue and all that. But I feel like having maybe Brandish, Athena, Blair come in, help out Lucy, support her, and maybe we even get Umetrio or some kind of unison raid with all those that she's very close to because i said it before one of lucy's biggest selling points is the weird amount of people she's grown close to but i'm not sure which of these new orations says would she end up facing off with and would we have members of fire and flame come in as well in order to cause trouble because you have this two scenario sisters but would they just stay together and then you'd have wed lecca 
Brian, but Raj is still around too. And then what do you do about Igneous? I'm not sure how all these matchups are going to be dis distributed. Because that could create another interesting situation. Because you have a fairy tale member, then one of the dragon gods, and as well as the dragonized people of that town, then a member of the Ereshian says, and then also a member of Fire and Flame. Ah, oh, so that could, whoa, that could be some interesting battle. Or are we saving dealing with Fire and Flame till later? And the thing about the members of Fire and Flame too was that I was thinking, they seem pretty strong, strong enough, but not as strong as they could be. But Dragonization, their physical ability has grown, and maybe their magical ability as well. Hmm, you could do some really interesting things with here. But I'm, I'm hesitant on a lot of that because I'm not sure, you know, how intense Mashimo wants to make all of this. But this could be a really intense finale. Cause like, come on man, you gotta go all out. You gotta at least bring the thunder to a comparable level as to the Tartarus art. Because just the various different factions all fighting is already more interesting than Tartarus because I mean Alvarez the Alvarez situation because it was mostly just our heroes versus the forces of Alvarez and then you had Agnologia doing his thing in the background but now there's such an interesting even distribution of forces that really do put all of our heroes on the back foot because of the out of control dragon gods and dragonized people, the demons from Book of Ferris, and then the members of Fire and Flame. That really puts the odds against Fairy Tale and makes it so that you need people to come in and back them up. That could be a solid, interesting conclusion, especially by having Natsu, Lucy, Grey, Wendy, Urza all needing to really step up against these overwhelming odds because they had a good amount of backup when it came to fighting against Alvarez. They were pretty outmatched, but they managed to rise to the occasion against powerful people. But it's the numbers that could overwhelm them and having people coming in to support them, but also lifting them up, keeping the spotlight on them individually, that could be solid too. So I'm definitely interested to see how this all pans out. I, I don't want to get my hopes too high, but at the same time, my hopes are really high for how this all goes down. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I know I went on a massive tangent, but just the, this got so much more interesting than what I initially thought. And I was already like, I don't know if this is going to be a great conclusion because there's a limited amount of things that you really need to do in order to cap this all off and now just leave it to Martian to be like acceleration the plot twists are interesting enough and the tie-ins to other moments and situations are interesting enough and even having zero come in like what zero what Part of me wants him to face off against Natsu again, but another part of me hopes that Zero faces off against Wendy. That would be interesting. Ah, there's some, there's some really cool stuff you could do here. Ah, come on, Mashima, come on. Let me know your thoughts and theories in the comment section below. Like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed the ride. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I've been Deez Diz Den, and I hope to see you later. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs>